Hello again. Hola. We had a one week break. We did. One week in, a, in an extra day. Yeah. But we are back. We back. Should we tell them why we missed the... My today? computer blew up. <laughs> it's, you say blow up, but I blow up, I in my mind, I'm thinking like... Well, sparks. Here's here's the story. Boom. I was editing at my desk in my room because mm-hmm. I have a cool job where I get to work from home sometimes. Yeah. And I was editing, and my computer started smoking. And if your computer smokes in my brain, that means it blew up because your computer is yeah. not supposed to smoke. Regardless of what language you use, the microphone just zapped my. Mm-hmm. Lips. That's not good. Yeah. You just got shocked. I just got shocked. Blew up. That's what I'm saying. My, my microphone <laughs> just blew up. But yeah, so we took a um, a, a week and a day break, but yeah. we're back now um, with a new background. It's kind of fun. We're going to be trying some things out to just for funsies. Yeah, if you are one of the few people that li- just listen to this, you're not on YouTube, you just listen, whether it's Spotify or Apple Podcasts, um, we've changed our background. And so whatever your imagination has been picturing as the background, go ahead and imagine a new one. Just stick with us. Yep. Yeah. It's pretty fun. So uh, Ultimately, I would love to get a, a giant aquarium behind us, like saltwater it'd fish, be sweet. sharks yeah. swimming behind us. And I would love to um, – have, have you ever seen uh, Shark Tales? Shark Tales? Shark Tales. No. Oh, it's Never a movie, heard. and uh, I'd love to hire those fish that are in that movie to be in the background. Is it'd it a good fun. movie? I can promote it. Oh, here. You know – Forget about Shark Tales. We'll get Nemo in there and Dory. Uh, I was more thinking Rainforest Cafe. Like, let's turn the whole ministry center, our, like our youth building, <gasps> to a Rainforest Cafe. That'd be kind of cool. Cafe. Big old jungle. That'd be fun. And then we'll have, like, the lion. A jungle cast. Jesus. A lion. God, the, the king of the... A lion. Speaking of lion... Or lion's Den. Lion's Den. Up. April 23rd, 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. All right. We're babbling. Let's get started. This is, like, an Easter... This is our, One, offic- right? yeah, our official Easter episode. Yes. Because Easter is, if, if when we're recording this, Easter is coming up. We're on Wednesday, so we have Good Friday, a couple days, and then yep. Easter Sunday coming up. We, yep, we don't yep. have our, our, a live youth church on Easter Sunday night, yep. but uh, Easter services, please you know, come join us, 8, uh, 9, 30, and 11, 15. Those are our three options for our Sunday morning services. Yep. And uh, join us. I love Easter. It's great. It's going to be great. Yeah. W- rain or shine. Or and snow, apparently. Yeah, it snowed today, and right now, I don't know if you guys will be able to hear it, but it is pouring rain, and I can hear it on the roof. But it's blowing up. Should we give them an ASMR? See uh, hear it? A rain. Okay, ready? One, two, three. That's my chair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Easter, do you have... Do you? Does your family do anything Easter, like Easter, Easter, Easter traditions? Like you as a little boy, you're looking for eggs, basket. Do you got any of those, yeah. those um, viral pictures of kid with Easter bunny? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, they're the ones all, where the kids are all like scared because yeah. they're seeing well, the, the Easter yeah, bunny? Yeah, the Easter bunnies are they're, haggard looking. They're terrifying. Yeah, absolutely. If I was a kid, I would pee myself and be screaming my head off too. Yeah, you do that as an adult. I do, all um, the time. What do you do? Traditions? Uh, we do Easter egg hunt. So this little egg right there. We'd be hunting for 12 of those. And growing up, my grandma would put a dollar in each egg. And uh, I remember specifically when I was in like sixth grade or seventh grade, I really wanted to get a watch. And I remember seeing these watches at Walmart. They have like a watch section for the guys. And there's $8.88 watches. So I was like, awesome. On Easter, I'm going to get this watch. You got to find nine eggs. And... With the with the eggs that I find, but and did I you did have a limit because you have siblings. Was it like okay, you're only all allowed to no uh, each find. each each uh each grandkid because our grandparents did it. Each grandkid got twelve eggs. Oh yeah, so you could go. You gotta go watch and some candy. That's like, what I'm cool. saying. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. So so yeah, we did that, and then we always you know after church would hang out and uh and uh and yeah and eat food with like the whole family. And I had, I have like 30 something cousins on that side of the family specifically. So yeah, it was packed. What's 30 times 12? 30 times 12. I mean, it's over $300. Yeah. Big time. So it's $360, so $324. Yeah. We were blessed big time. So yeah, they were grandma and grandpa were hooking you up. They were hooking all of us up, but no candy, just dollars. No, they'd fill some with candy too, but, but yeah. I think some of them would have like candy and a dollar or something uh, like that. But sure. she also gave us like a basket 
that would have like candy and stuff like that afterwards. Yeah. And my mom, even to this day, will put a uh, a basket in front of our door, and then we still get an Easter bunny basket in front of our door. So you wake up in the morning mm-hmm. to two Easter baskets, two Easter candy baskets, and things. And one from Mama. Wow. One from the Easter Bunny. Wow. Every year. I'm letting my kids down. Every year. I'm letting my kids down. I don't think so. Okay. Just try harder. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's fun. What about you? Did you did you grow up doing anything? Like, what do you do now? Um, like as a dad with your with your kids mm-hmm. and your wife. And what did you do like? As a kid growing up with your yeah. family, because you're one of six, right? Yeah, I'm one of six. So okay, that's crazy. Okay, oh, as you talk, I'm listening. Our our computer's gonna die. So it's you go blow for up. It. Yeah. <laughs> All right, go for it. Yeah, go get a plug. Um, okay, growing up. My my parents would yeah they'd make us an Easter basket. We all had them, but they would hide it in the house. So we'd wake up, we'd go to church, then come home, do lunch or whatever. And they would hide the Easter basket. So we all had our own. I don't even. I think mine was. I think I had a green one. And so I knew, like, go look for the green one, and it was hidden around the house. And when they opened up, got all the candy and stuff like, like that. Green basket or green eggs? I th- my basket was green. Oh, okay. So they'd hide the entire basket. Oh, they had a whole basket. And then, yep. And then we, as we grew up, we moved to a new, new city, and, and uh, we would go to some friend's house. They had some property, a little farm, a little orchard, and we would p- partner with some other. Uh, families, a bunch of kids, and we would do a massive Easter egg hunt. And some of them had money in them, a lot of candy. You know, every family would bring their eggs. The parents would all hide them. But then there was the golden egg, the one, the golden egg that was worth like I think one year was like fifty bucks. If you find the golden egg, it was only one of them, and so oh geez. it was always a big deal. Nowadays with my kids, so it's it's fun because you know for for me as a pastor, we have church in the morning, Sunday mornings, but we're a Sunday night youth group church. And so right. I don't see much of my family on Sunday. And so on a on Easter it's fun because we don't have youth group that night. So I'm home. We will uh we'll go to my wife's family's house and we'll do dinner and we'll do a big Easter egg hunt for the kids and That's cool. they love it. So do you have like any specific memory with your kids on Easter? Because uh, I feel like that's a really fun one for like yeah. younger kids specifically. Yeah, my kids are still s- so young, so they're four and two. I mean, I guess they're almost three and five, but um, it, you know, just the looking for the Easter eggs is such a fun thing. I, I do remember my daughter's, my my oldest, my firstborn, her first Easter egg hunt, and it was that's cool. just looking around the backyard for the eggs. And at that age, they don't understand they find one and they're happy like no keep looking keep looking so she they're 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 starting to understand it so you're starting to see the competition a Mm -hmm. little bit like we don't have like this is your specific color it's like go find the eggs and so there's some competition there yeah there's a little (laughs) rivalry so we're trying to teach her like hey let's look out for brother hey let's let your cousins do some but it's fun man that's That's cool good time i remember in sunday school um when i was a kid they kind of broke down the reason as to why you open the egg Oh, what they so say? So if you don't, I don't know if this is still talked about in Sunday school because I'm 21, so I'm not a kid. But, but you still <laughs> get Easter, but, but Easter Bunny oh, still. Oh, but Easter Bunny deli- still comes <laughs> to my front door every yeah, sure. every year. Yep. But uh, so it, when you open the egg on Easter, it's supposed to resemble the tomb being or the the stone being removed mm. from the tomb, and the surprise inside is supposed to resemble. The surprise of the of empty tomb, like the shock. Right. Okay. Of sure. the resurrected Jesus. Yeah, I get that. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to be talking about this episode. Is Kids Church. Yep. Specifically, just Kids <laughs> Church. <laughs> uh, the resurrection. The resurrection. Yeah. The Easter story. Yeah, I love that. So that's what we tried to talk about. I, I say tried. That's what we talked about Sunday night. Yeah. Uh, at, at youth. Mm-hmm. At youth group. It was great. It was I, th- I think my main point was I wanted to challenge us to to live resurrected. You know, I think we oftentimes right. get hung up on. I, I actually, I would say this. I think a lot of us still try to uh, put death to sin. Do you know what I mean? We what do you, What do you mean? I mean, we're striving so hard to avoid sin. We fo- we put more focus on um, conquering sin rather than living under the victory that Jesus already uh, achieved over sin and moving into, hey, let's live resurrected. Oh, okay. So, like, basically, 
meaning like we are focused on awesome, like we're forgiven of our sins instead of like sweet, we're forgiven of our sins because Jesus died and rose again. So let's strive to be like Jesus and, you know, repent from our sins. Yeah, that's that's a good way to put it. I, I, I would, let me explain this more. I think a lot of times there's a lot of us that are still trying to be Jesus. Okay. In other words, we're trying to um, pay for our sin, do right, uh, to make up for any past sins. Oh, gotcha. We're still, do you know what I mean? Like forgiveness by works? Yeah, yeah there it is, a workspace theology. I have to okay. earn when, when the reality is we just have to accept. Like So, yeah. so th- to me, I look at th- no, there's, good. there's three parts to the Easter story in, in talking about Jesus. Um, we see, well, okay, I'm not limiting this. We know that there's so much to Jesus, obviously his birth and his life, his yeah. ministry here on earth. But right, but for this conversation. For this conversation, yeah. let's look at the death of Jesus. Right. Uh, the resurrection of Jesus. Okay. But then the third piece, the ascension of Jesus. Okay. Right? Let, yeah. I mean, it makes sense to go in that order. Yeah, right? absolutely. Like, so the death of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Like, um, humanly speaking, mm-hmm. the most permanent thing that we know right as humans can understand is death right i think most of us have known someone or experienced someone whether it's a family member a friend or or, or even just a, a distant relative whatever it is a classmate we we've known someone who has passed right yeah and when that happens here on this earth they're not coming back that's permanent right that's permanent our brain is like okay they are you know for now yeah gone they are not on this earth anymore and that's the most permanent thing we can wrap our brains around because everything can change every day including you know life so if someone that i know or even myself pass away that's the most permanent thing you can kind of think of is death because that's it yeah now with jesus we have to it, it you have to associate his death with also the death of sin Right. And so if we're knowing death as permanent, we mm-hmm. have to understand that our sin has been taken care of. So, so yeah, that's good. For those, I, I don't know, I wouldn't assume that everybody knows this story. I hope there's people that are maybe listening to this podcast because they're just interested I- in faith. But I, I would, ass- you know, a lot of us are understand this. But, you know, the Bible says that uh, there's a price to pay for sin. Mm-hmm. And it also says that we're all sinners. Nobody is absent of sin it's just a part of of who we are the temptations of the earl of this world are too great for the um we'll call it the, the humanity mm-hmm. and so that's why jesus came because there was a death penalty there's a price need to be paid so he came as known as the perfect sacrifice right um in scripture they would celebrate what's called the passover which was when um they would they would sacrifice uh a lamb they, the, there was uh, back in the, the in scripture you can read about they were uh asking for the firstborn of every household and he would spare the life of those who took and painted blood above their uh their, do- their, their doors. doors yeah right so that signified um obedience to, to christ right. so anyway um so jesus came as that perfect sacrifice right so that people wouldn't have to do that uh-huh. anymore because yeah. it's not necessary <laughs> to yeah. be doing that kind of stuff totally so now because of Jesus's, you know, sacrifice of yeah. his life yeah. and his resurrection, not only ha- did he conquer death, but he conquered sin for us. Yeah. Because there's no other way that it yeah, he we put, could have conquered sin. He put death to sin. Right. But then he didn't he didn't stay dead. Right. Instead re- resurrected back to life, but it's a new life. Mm-hmm. And that's where we have that opportunity to receive that that new life, and that's what made that's what made him that's what made him the perfect sacrifice. That's what made him that's what makes him God, right? Is that not even death, the most permanent thing we know, right? He overcame, right? So, death to sin, resurrection. Jesus didn't just come to make bad people good; mm-hmm. he came to bring life to dead people. Yeah, we without Jesus, we are on journey to death. So yep. that's that's where we receive the, re- the resurrection. And, and you were talking to me earlier today about like Mary's response, Mary Magdalene, as she, as she encountered Jesus. Did you, did you find that? Or? Yeah. Um, so it's John uh, chapter 20, 
it starts at verse 11, so I'll just go ahead and kind of read it. So it's titled, uh, Jesus Appears to Mary Magdalene. Uh, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look, er, to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had laid. Uh, I kind of butchered that last verse, but we're going to keep going. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. So Mary Magdalene had came to the tomb uh, weeping, you know, because she was experiencing that, you know, grief, that grief yeah. that she had lost Jesus, that permanent death yeah. that we all thought was permanent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So she was weeping and missing Jesus because he was now gone. Yeah. And she had been a part of his ministry, seeing all the things that he had done and being a person that she had performed. He had performed a miracle on her. Yeah. So she's like, what is going on? Like, yeah, where is he? He's gone. He died and he's not in the tomb. Yeah. Like freaking out, not knowing what to do. So after that, where did I leave off? Where did I leave off? Having said this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus in the tomb. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Suppose, uh, supposing him to be the gardener, she thought that Jesus was a gardener. She told him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have led him or laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned around and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, or Rabbi, which means teacher. Uh, Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. So to unpack that, Mary went to the tomb. Jesus wasn't there. She's freaking out. She's in grief. Where did Jesus go? He's not here anymore. But he was, and she thought he was the gardener. She goes, where have you laid him? And then she realizes it's Jesus, and he says, wait, before you come to me. Yeah, don't cling to me, he said. Yep, don't yeah. cling to me. Go and, and tell the others. Basically, yeah. go tell the disciples yeah. that I am now ascending to the Father. You so, are witness to my resurrection. Yep. So, which by the way, going back, like she in this moment is realizing, okay, first I lost him uh, after he was uh, killed on the cross. Yep. The crucifixion yeah. on the Paid cross. Paid the rebel's death. So she's like lost him there. Then literally like lost his body, his dead body. Now yeah. I've lost him. So here he appears. He's, you know, it's, it's cool. He says, it's once he says her name, mm -hmm. Mary, she realizes that's Jesus. That's Jesus. Yep. So she didn't want to lose him again, but he's saying, you can't cling to me because I still need to ascend to, to the Father. To the Father, mm -hmm. yeah. And his ascension into the Father also meant his releasing of his presence, the Holy right. Spirit, where that's where we see, you know, the empowerment. We're, we're, I think the Holy Spirit comes to us for the security of his love. We mm -hmm. know his presence. We know about the death and resurrection. Mm -hmm. We would call that salvation, to be saved from our deaths, right. saved from our the redemption yep. of our sin and in, of our lives. Uh, so that's the security of his love for is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But then there's the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And this yeah. is where we start to see Mary, like you'd said, go tell the disciples, mm -hmm. uh, you know, testify of the resurrection. Tell them what you have seen and not just seen, but now experienced. She's experienced Jesus. And yeah. then as we continue to read through the, the Gospels and we're, we're focusing on John, mm -hmm. John chapter 20, we read about Jesus revisiting and visiting various disciples and letting them see right. that he has conquered death. His mm -hmm. power is being seen here. And then, um, like Thomas, that's crazy to me. Yeah. The story of Thomas, um, he goes to Thomas and Thomas is like, Nope. Yeah. You're not real. Well, no. Yeah. What is Thomas? His, his name is Thomas, but he, they call him doubting Thomas. Yeah. He yeah. has taken on the identity as a doubter. That's what he's famous for, mm -hmm. for doubting. It's like being so skeptical, uh -huh. skeptical about like literally everything. Yeah. And he was there when Jesus had turned water to wine and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So from the beginning, he's like, I don't know. He's yeah. just that guy. Yeah. But so he goes to Thomas and Thomas is like, no, that's not you. And he like shows him the holes in his hands yeah. from being hung on the cross. And then this is a little graphic, but it's, it's what they did. Uh, the Romans, there was this big storm once Jesus had actually passed away on the cross. And to make sure that he was dead... They actually like stabbed him yeah. in the ribs, yep. and 
the science behind that was, I think, if water comes out. I'm uh, not a science guy, so I'm not sure. I think it was if, if the water had came out and it wasn't just blood, that blood wasn't circulating in his oh, body. Sure. So that's how they could tell. He was okay. actually dead. Yeah. Something like that. Don't quote me on that. I won't. I'm not from National <laughs> Geographic or whatever. I don't know. But anyways, um, so when he was resurrected, not only did he have the holes in his hands yeah, and in his feet, that, that puncture. but he had that puncture wound. Mm. So he goes to Thomas and goes, basically tells him, well, this is me. Yeah. If you don't believe me, feel my wound. Yeah, my scars. And my scars. And then, yeah. And then it Thomas d- sees that and yeah. like, oh. <gasps> but how powerful because it's like it's it's the stripes you know, we talk about like mm-hmm. w- so one of the most common ways that we recognize and remember the crucifixion th- you know death resurrection is through what we would call communion which is right. a a traditional uh, traditional practice through with church of of drinking in our church juice and uh, a, a cracker and right. and we've talked about this i think on the podcast before so basically the cracker represents uh, jesus's body and the juice represents the blood so the body that was broken those those wounds that that thomas was touching right and the the blood that was shed as he was beaten on the cross and like i think it's it's important for us when we when we participate in communion that in a way we're we're doing what what thomas did lord where i've doubted Mm. where i've not trusted you where I've forgotten about the sacrifice, the the love that you pro- proved for me, you know that cracker. That's a, that's essentially like Thomas, like like touching the wounds and remembering, this is Jesus, yeah, and here great. he is. And so, you know, that's that's what this weekend is all about too. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's a it's a remembering, but it's a celebration. Yeah, you know, it's now this is Jesus. He is back, and we can celebrate this. And so this is where that's uh, that, you know my prayer for this weekend is we celebrate, but that we receive the Holy Spirit to remember the the love that He's proven for us. Mm-hmm. But then to take that and just like we saw with Thomas, with Mary, with mm-hmm. the other, to now testify that others can experience Jesus the way we've experienced yeah. Him, the way the disciples experienced right. Him, and we are today. You know, because of His presence and what He did, and so I love Easter. That's I good. Absolutely love Easter. It's great. Let's celebrate. Jesus. It's going to be tons, tons of fun and yeah. just a big celebration of Jesus and yeah. his resurrection and what he had has and continues to do for, mm. for us. But yeah, I, I love the, the story of, of Thomas and that whole doubting thing. And mm-hmm. it's just crazy to me. Cause I'm like, cause I get it. Yeah. Like, it's right? like, it's relatable. <laughs> well, it's you? like, it's like when you, you know, you pray for something and you, and you don't get what you want or something in life is hard and you're like, going through it mm-hmm. like that's when you might start to doubt doubt yeah. god yeah, right. and, and doubt jesus's yep. works and time and time again when i am feeling that whether it's minutes hours days weeks months later he proves that he's still good yep. and all things are going according to his plan yeah and in that moment he it's all like kind of in representation of the story of thomas that's when he shows you his wounds and you're like Okay, like, yeah. now I understand why, Jesus, you are doing these things for me in my life, because if it were up to me, it, it wouldn't be as good as what you have planned yeah. for me kind of thing. So, like, yeah. those moments in life where you're like, I didn't get what I want, or mm-hmm. this sucks, mm-hmm. but then Jesus reveals his plan and his goodness and his scars and says, you know, look at my scars, look at these things or whatever, like, just in representation of, you know, I... I have done this for you my plan is for you because i love you and hmm. all things are going to go mm-hmm. according to his plan and then that just reminds me like when we when we pray and we say amen um so be it so be it yeah. be- and basically meaning like okay lord do what you want yeah not what i want um and sometimes he gives you what you want but it's just not how it goes yeah all the time um and i think that's just the that's the cool thing um, about Jesus Ooh. is that we can still be a doubting Thomas, but he time and time and time again shows up and shows you his scars Ooh. and tells you and proves his love for you. Yeah. And, uh, done for you. and, uh, yeah. And that's Easter. Yeah. You can, I can, can I say this too, that mm-hmm. like, you know, we, we mentioned that like as humans, humanly speaking, we see things as impossible. Yeah. The, the, the scripture too, it says, but, but, 
to God, all things are possible. Mm-hmm. So this is humanly. So we we talk about death being permanent, but God resurrected. He over came death and so i just want to encourage i don't know when you're listening maybe it's after easter before easter I don't, whatever i would just say this whatever situation in your life that feels dead whatever situation in your life that feels hopeless like this is what we're talking about this weekend easter is all about resurrection maybe you you have a dream maybe god's put something in your heart um and I, i'm telling you like th- there could be a time where this is a time where God wants to resurrect that. And I yep. want us to live resurrected, live with new life, new purpose. Cause once we were lost, but now we're found once we were dead, but now we're alive and we need to live as such alive in Christ. He's given us life. Uh, this life that we live is his. Therefore I'm committed to living for him. And then what you said, mm-hmm. I can do that um, faithfully. And, and I would say confidently because I know that he has his Listen, his plan is I- I- in order, right? Mm-hmm. And when my life plan lines up with his plan, then we're going to see goodness in our life. Yep, absolutely, you 100%. Know? And so, anyway, I, I got preachy today. It's all good. That's all how right. it happens. Yeah. I think I might want to get preachy one more time before we you end. Got one more thing? Let's um, go. So I went to my uh, old church this weekend. Shout out to Dayspring Fellowship and uh, just was on the worship team there. This yeah. weekend, and Chris Voigt is their head pastor, and he he had preached. Um, he his the me- the title of his message was the Bad Boy of Easter, Ooh. and it was about Judas. And for those don't that don't know about Judas, he was one of the disciples and sold, basically sold Jesus out. Yep. For his death. Yep. For thirty uh, coins of silver, which is like what's the market value of silver today? Thirty coins of silver. Um, I'm kidding. It's like no, but for real. But how like many? How thirty many? bucks, about. So he sold them out. He Judas sold Jesus out for nine hundred dollars. And how how much is that in Bitcoin? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> in Bitcoin. Bitcoin. But so Judas sold Jesus out for nine hundred dollars uh, to the Roman Empire, basically, mm. and and uh, that's kind of how the Romans got information as to where Jesus was going to be and all this kind of stuff. But before that had happened. Jesus went to, um, I can't remember his name, but he went to, oh, there, it, his name isn't named in the Bible. Um, it was a healed leper. And well, what, did he have a name? I can't remember. I don't know. Was he named? Yeah, I don't know either. But anyways, he went to the home of I a leper so. that we assume he healed because leprosy was a disease that couldn't, yeah. there was no cure for it. Yeah. And Jesus had healed several people of leprosy. So he went to this this guy's house to have dinner with this leper and this healed leper and this woman comes to Jesus and he's while Jesus is having dinner with this this leper and the disciples and while Judas is there um she walks into the room with this alabaster jar and that is what they used to per- perfume in and perfume back when was very expensive still today and yeah still today but uh, I did the math in service, and in modern day currency, the modern day American dollar, that jar would be worth si- about sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, because it says it was worth a uh, year's wages. A year's wage, yeah. And it's uh, the ye- average yearly wage of an American is like sixty two thousand dollars and whatever else. But it's like sixty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So what she does, she breaks the top of the bottle, which is how you had to open it, and she pours it over Jesus. Yeah. And that was her representation of I will I'm giving you everything I have, yeah. and this this for her was an inve- it's an investment. Hmm. It was an investment in her future, and in her eternal life. Going and that was the representation of her pouring her life into Jesus, saying I give you everything I have mm-hmm. to follow your plan, mm-hmm. to trust what you're going to do for me. And, you know, the rest of the story goes, you know, Judas go, freaks out and is like, I can't believe you did that. Yeah. Like, that was, that's worth, you know, all this money. And Judas was all about money. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, he sold Jesus up for $900. <laughs> and so Jesus is like, Judas, this is, this is like, how dare you be mad at this woman for honoring me? Right. And because Jesus knew what price he was about to pay right. to save us. The woman didn't, but... Right then and there, in front of everybody, she just poured everything, uh-huh. literally and and metaphorically, she had into Jesus for to live for him. Yeah, 
And uh, you know what though? Yeah. Like, like so obviously Judas. I just was, love, I love that story. Yeah, Judas was in the spot, and sorry, thank you, but Judas was in the spot where he was literally with Jesus, and he was mm-hmm. literally presented with the temptation. We'll give you this. You're saying nine hundred dollars for the location of Jesus, right? Where he'll be, how we can get him, mm-hmm. and so that was the literal. But like, if we use that, I think. Let's not kid ourselves. Nine hundred dollars is a lot of money, <laughs> you know. Like, yeah. uh, obviously, sure. maybe not when you put it for the price of our Savior, right? But you know, I think in a, in a sense we still do that a lot of times today. Yeah, that we choose for sure physical. We choose resources, f- physical possessions, monetary value on right. things above the Lord, wh- whatever that may be. Work. I mean, like, yep. I have to work on Sundays. I can't. I can't be a part of church. I can't. You know, it's. We're putting monetary value over the the priceless um, sacrifice of Jesus, right? You know, and so yeah. you know, I think we just got to check ourselves on that a lot of times. Good. But anyway, there's a lot today. There could be a like lot. A, or, or we take one week off, and we got a lot to say. It was fun though. Our Easter episode. If you guys got any questions about anything that we just said, you can follow us at Alive WSFC on Instagram. Yep. DM us. Ask us your questions. We will answer them. And uh, youth group, we won't have April 17th, mm-hmm. but we'll, we'll be, we will be back April 23rd. Yeah, celebrate, 7 p.m. Celebrate Easter with us in the morning. Yep. And then in, in, in with your families. Yep. Yeah. And then and then we're back, like you said, for Lion's Den. Lion's Den. On the 23rd for high school oh, that's right. and I young got, adult. I got Sunday wrong. Yeah, that's all right. High school and young adult men. That's Saturday the 23rd, 9.30. Yep. Make sure you're here for that. We're having a lot of fun with that. I'm excited for awesome. this month's guest speaker, David Johnson. And then be here on the 24th. This is one of my favorite youth groups every year. Um, every time we do it, I should say, this is called our Five for Five. We have five different speakers from our youth ministry, leaders and even students. That's cool. Leading us that night, sharing what God's been putting on their heart. Uh, so five different speakers on Sunday the 24th. So. April 24th, Uh, 7 p.m. Awesome. We will see you at Alive Youth Church. Yeah. And we'll see you uh, for Easter and all that good stuff. Have fun with your family. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate each other. And uh, have a good week, you guys. Starburst jelly beans. Starburst jelly beans. That's my favorite. That's your favorite? Easter candy. Actually, it's probably one of my favorite candies. Not even Easter. Starburst jelly beans. They're in my pantry right now. I'll probably go home and eat them. There you go. Love you guys.